Look at your feet. What are you wearing on your feet? Kind of like sandals, leather sandals. Mm -hmm. And on your body? Uh, some kind of gown. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of linen-y colour. Mm. Is it long or short? Uh, it's long. Mm -hmm. Almost like a toga kind of thing. Do you look like a male or female? I feel genderless. Mm -hmm. You I feel genderless? Yeah. Tell me about it. What do you mean? Just am. Um, I wander this library. I'm one of the kind of the helpers of the people sitting at the tables. What so, do you mean, helpers? I love this place. Yeah, it's just one of the roles I enjoy doing, helping people find the books they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Where is this library? I'm wandering over to a stained glass window. It's kind of a building within, like a white building. People call it the Akashic Records, but it's not. It's a, it's a place for those not ready to go to the Akashic Records. It's more of a fun place. It looks more homely library-esque. Mm -hmm. And which people go in this library, you said? Um, and what for? They almost like high school students. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a school library. Um, so people go there to educate themselves? Yeah, mm. pick up knowledge. Mm. What kind of um, books are there available for them? Anything they want. It's just like a, a standard library or the leather bound. They, all the books look first edition leather bound. Mm, beautiful. What kind of themes are there? Can you see? So it's two tiers, um, so you've got the tables running down the middle mm -hmm. and at the sides they have alcoves where they've got like a mezzanine floor, um, a midway floor, uh -huh. so you can still look into the tables in the middle but um, the books are kept on two storeys. Mm. Um, an odd shape that it's built in, I'm tall enough to so my chest height is where the floor is. Um, I'm a lot taller than the people that are in this room. Mm. How? Uh, what colour is your skin? Pale. Um, pale white? White, yeah. It's sparkling. <laughs> white, sparkling, pale? Yeah. Beautiful. Have a look at your face. And describe it for me, please. What do you see? Um, just white pale got mm -hmm. long blonde hair long blonde hair can you describe me your eyes how do your eyes look like ice blue 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 yeah. beautiful are they normal size or do they look a little bit different than normal human eyes they're very round and my nose is kind of angular like a roman nose i think this is the, before it got burnt down, this is the kind of Alexander Library. You mean the actual library that w was in Alexandria? Yeah, but it's been modernised. <laughs> so instead of... What do you mean? Um, so it's people's love of that place. They've recreated it here within the Akashic Records. But instead of scrolls everywhere, they've updated them with like leather bound books for the kind of new souls coming in so they can experience what it was like to be in a place of learning but not have to constantly unravel scrolls that they're not used to from yeah. when they first come in. And where did all these books came from? Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit like the Discworld one, it's everyone's, if you thought of writing a book, it exists here so if you didn't get around to writing it physically it, it still exists what do you mean if people have like uh, a fiction story that they like hmm. almost like daydreams and they've always like oh I'll, I'll write a book about it and they start and then lose interest or something else happens and it kind of fades out in the physical realm here it exists in a full book form because in one of their lives they would have written, gone and followed the idea and written the book. 
So this is kind of the library of ideas and stories that exist in at least one universe of someone's life, of one version. Mm-hmm. What is your role there? What do you think you're doing there? People come up to me and go, I want this book, I want this book. And I, because I'm connected to this place, I can easily find it for them. And mm. Although they can go upstairs and find it themselves, um, I can just reach up and pick it out the yeah. shelf for them and give it to them to read. Mm-hmm. I make sure everyone's having a good time. There's a few of us here. It's not just me. Um, I think we don't always have to be here. It's uh, kind of a job you can do if you feel like it. Mm. I can see two others of similar height and mm. make to me wandering around. How much taller are you, are you than the regular people who are there to, to read these books? I'm double size, almost like when you, like a statue size when you go into mm. churches, so mm-hmm. not just tall, just really like almost eight foot tall. Wow. That's how we can kind of look at both floors at once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we can shrink if we need to, Mm -hmm. if it gets too awkward. But the ease of just reaching and picking up books, it's easier to be tall. You said that you can shrink if you want to? Yeah. How do you do that? What's the mechanism? We just think it and we we shrink down. Okay. If we want to talk to someone face to face and they can't change their um, size, size, we can change Mm -hmm. to their size. So you think and instantaneously you, you get the size that is appropriate? Yeah, I'm not... Because this body is mostly light, it's just easy to change. Awesome. How do the people who are there are uh, different than you? They've got more colour. They wear lots of clothes. Mm-hmm. What I'm used to in this life, like Western clothes. I like their energy. They're like larking about. Can you describe them for me, please? It's more dense than mine. Um, mm-hmm. like actual skin I'm getting this is like a between place so people who still associate strongly with their bodies come here because they feel safe it's like a library that they've known in their life mm-hmm. they're still wearing their bodies mm-hmm. but I think this place starts losing the appeal when they slowly learn that, that, that they don't need their body anymore can you explain that? Um, it's a familiar place so people come here who are not ready to consider themselves fully spiritual they still want the illusion of being human Mm -hmm. and they want to have fun in a but they're still studious is it uh, like an in-between lives um, station or is it a place where everybody could go no it's the ones Oh, like my my life here, it's when people who are very logical brained die, it's a place where they can hang out and still feel comfortable comfortable hanging around books and still learning. Mm. So that's why it's kind of a a room within the Akashic Records, but it still looks like something from Earth. They're not incarnated on Earth, they've just, they're not ready to fully accept that the, the spirit world can contain anything. They want to cling to things they knew on Earth. So that's why this place exists for them. Um, how they explain me and my colleagues, <laughs> I don't know. But that's because that's why we really look like mar- moving marble statues. Mm-hmm. That's how they, they deal with our presences. So we look like marble statues from mm-hmm. their, what they may have seen in a museum while they were uh, incarnated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is like a transition library house for those that loved knowledge in the spirit world but not fully, really yet accept that they've died. How is this place connected to the Akashic Records libraries? It's kind of housed in the middle of it so we've got the stained glass window at the end of the hall which brings in pretty colourful rainbow light Mm. so that's because it's reflecting the bright light that's outside of the hall that it sits in Mm -hmm. I mean this place looks huge but 
compared to the Akashic Records halls. It's a <laughs> doll's house yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the floor <laughs> that people have to be careful not to trip over when they go through the main hall. Wow. Um, Does this place have a name? I'm just... I can just see Roman numerals outside of it on the entrance. What do you see? XXV1. XXV1. C. C. S. S. Also, it's kind of just numbers. I see. Mm. It's kind of on the entrance Mm. wall as you go in. Okay. What material are the, the, the selves of the library? What are they made of? Loving wood. I, I kind of stroke the, the, the wood of it because it, it looks like oak. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like decked out like a, an impressive library where those who want to be studious aren't disturbed by those that want to laugh and lark about. It's lovely in here. Everyone gets along, but has their own space. Mm-hmm. I like being here because it's like a crash. Like a what? <laughs> a a crash. What so, do you mean? Um, so <laughs> the souls that were lovely in life, full of good intentions, mm. but don't believe in the afterlife. Mm. It's a place where they feel safe and hang out, and you get to see their personalities. Mm-hmm. But the same ones this we try and talk about what else is out there ah so you're also educating them yeah I think we're kind of the initial contact they have that there's something not quite right <laughs> with their lives but we have to be so delicate with how much we show them because okay. if it's too much yeah they retreat so in a way they come for for help for guidance they are not looking just for hardcore information in a book they come because they need some some halfway house so you are able to do that for them yeah I mean if they start asking me questions mm, mm. I I I can't tell a lie I have to tell the truth um, I try and do it in such a fashion that won't that's at the level that I gauge that they can hear mm. and then so that is one of our roles here. Another one is just to have fun with them and, mm-hmm. and get the books and just almost like children play act with what they want to do. Mm-hmm. But I only do this role occasionally because I have to remind myself <laughs> that there's more out, more outgoing. More what? That there's more to the, the spirit realm than this, this library. Because mm-hmm. after a while it can be, when you exist in someone's imaginary play school, you have to go and learn for yourself elsewhere. So mm-hmm. but that's why there's always almost like a rotation of spirits that will come in and engage with the people here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's fun. So if you when you're not there, what else are you doing? I'm just leaving the library now, and yeah. So <laughs> as I step out the library, I kind of shake myself down and go even bigger than. <laughs> I was in the, in the library. Really like Alice cool. in Wonderland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. And uh, let's go to where it is um, that you, your, your home, so to say, mm. where it is the place where it's your private space that you can rest, okay. if there is any. And now we are there. It's um, I'm in the kind of living joint living space it's um a big wide space there's chairs everywhere everything's quite wide chairs everywhere like um reading chairs Mm -hmm. so this is like a meeting place Mm -hmm. um and there's again rooms that lead off from this living space Mm -hmm. where i connect with the people i work with what else is in this room you said there are plenty of chairs so yeah the, um there's a an oval table which has got a, a white top what material is it made of um, it's smooth like marble but it looks like mdf a laminate top with spiky legs and it's sitting on a, a, a rug which is uh, red no one's here at the moment but this is normally where we gather 
when we've each finished our project and want to lounge around and chat with each other. Um, I suppose I could go to like a hotel lobby. So we've all got our own rooms that we go to, but this is the main area where we come down and mm-hmm. mingle together. But we all live in the same kind of complex. Do you see any kitchen? Is there any need to eat? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was just... Um, come in and said don't be silly this is the dorm <laughs> so it's it like, like a university dorm <laughs> okay so that's why it's not like a house it's um our education We're with my fellow students how many students do you have one just brushed past me um mm-hmm. do you feel like you're teaching a big group Oh, I'm not being taught. I'm I'm one of the people's learning. I'm currently uh, on an education course, uh-huh. and this is our kind of a resident a pupil residence where we all gather to discuss what we've learned. I see. And the the beings who are, you, you're sharing this place with are they? Do they all look like you, or are they different? No, I'm quite pale. But the one that just. Um, brush past me saying don't be stupid this is a dorm it's a lot darker than me mm-hmm. he's um he's got wings and he's he's black oh he's got goat legs <laughs> sorry he doesn't have horns but he, he's like um satyr pan legs we were all different colors so a few another person's come out they're all red red yeah um can you describe them for me what kind of body do they have The red ones. Uh, this is red one looks like rocks all put together. Uh, rocks like um, earth, clumps of earth, so in a kind of humanoid form. So the texture of the actual body looks like a, in a rock formation. Yeah, um, lumpy, yeah. a bit of like the thing from um, Fifth Avengers, the rock one. Um, mm-hmm. And is uh, the color is red? Yeah, yeah, like orangey red. Orangey red. Yeah. And um, does he have uh, human features? Yeah, yeah, he's a humanoid form. I think we've all chosen mm-hmm. to have four limbs here for the ease of this university that we are at. And there's a, a yellow figure who's. Dinner, um, just come in as well. Tell me about this one. How does this look like? So, th- this one's giving off a feminine energy. The um, the yellow one. Yeah, the rock, orangey red one, masculine, and obviously the black one was masculine. Mm. The yellow one is more, um, although it's still got four lim- four limbs, is um, plant based. Mm-hmm. And what makes you say that? Well, how does How does this look like? Uh, um, I say plant-based. So, you know, praying mantids? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they make themselves look like a plant. Uh-huh. This is ah. what uh, this one looks like. So this one looks like a praying mantis? Yeah. And we're all leaving the room now to, to go to the class. You're going to the class? You're, yeah, heading off to it. To okay. Class. So, what happens next? We've wandered into um, a lecture hall. Um, and the teacher's writing stuff on the board. We don't need to take notes. We kind of... We, we take the information in through our souls. So there's no need to make endless notes. We, the mm. fact that we're there and engaging is mm. enough to, to learn what's being taught. So I have many questions. First, I want to ask, how does the teacher look like? Okay. Yeah. Um, so the teacher, what I can, it doesn't have a body as such. Um, uh, its form is, it's a orb resting on what looks like a six foot version of a golf tee but it's in black a six foot version of um it's like a a stick but with a, a platform that the orb rests on 
And then the orb sits on that. Yeah, it floats above it. Wonderful. Is, it, is this base able to move? Yeah, it moves around. Moves um, around? I think the, the um, base that the orb is sitting on floats underneath it and follows its movement. I think it's just so we can see where the orb is in case it disappears because <laughs> it's quite it's uh, white energy and it moves flows across the the board that it's writing on which is green ah, and I so said there is a board yeah but um uh, the orb kind of floats across the board and where it floats that's where the um the text appears awesome and how does the text appear and um, the, with a certain color or how do you uh, see? The, the text appears in white so almost like the standard chalk on a, on a green board okay. but it's more electronic than that yeah and the texture of the writings is it more li like uh, light or more dense it, it's brilliant white that, that's on there and wow brilliant white yeah on the green so it's nice contrast and it's mm. in oh in this life to me it it looks like either Arabic or Hebrew, but I don't understand those. Um, oh, but, you, you, but you can see the writings, right? Yeah, it's very uh, fluid mm. dashes, but in not my life, that's what I equate it to, because that's what I know from this life. I see, yeah. And what is he teaching, really? What is he teaching you? He, she? Yeah, isn't it, at this point? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. What is this being? Oh, it's being whispered at uh, because like uh, divine concepts is what is being taught. Divine concepts. Yeah. Beautiful. And what do these concepts include to you? Do you have any more information about that? Different ways in which um, love can be interwoven in situations. Mm -hmm. We've all come, as you probably gather, different areas and planets so we're all learning how we can incorporate these concepts mm -hmm. um, with what the areas we're involved with mm -hmm. I feel I'm preparing for earth this is like my kind of soul picking up knowledge to take with it mm -hmm. just as my fellow students are their soul forms taking the picking up the knowledge ready for their next kind of mission as it were mm, mm, mm. so you're feeling that uh, your mission is earth this time around this yeah. time around why? Mm. yes why why did you pick up earth this time around what was the purpose I'm there to help someone who wants to raise their vibration so I have to go to Earth to kind of be on their level to, to raise them up. So one of the things you're being taught is how to do that. Yes, yeah. But yeah, that, the hall that we're sitting in is quite large. There's loads of us all learning these, this concept. Mm -hmm. What else would you like to share about this, uh, this classroom? Is there anything else that uh, captured your attention and you would like to share? <laughs> so you've got us that look like humanoids you've got pupils which are flying so you look up and they're flapping um, like hovering in the air looking at the information as well <laughs> wow. uh, they look like uh, some yeah like dragons they look like dragons yeah big or small um in relation to me, kind of medium size because they've got to fit in the hall, so they're all they've made up a, a row above us, mm. like managing to hover in place to, to read the information. So they're flying, yeah, yeah, but flapping to keep themselves stationary but while still flying. Mm. What color are they? Um, most between red and black, red and black, yeah, so reptoids, uh, yeah. Mm. Anything else? Any other being that uh, you would like to mention that looks? Um, I look up on top of the hall, top of this hall is a dome, like a skylight, 
Mm. So a lot of light is coming in mm. as we all read this information. Mm. Mm. Very nice. So let's leave that scene and let's uh, move forward to another important day. What do you see around you? Lots of groups mingling. Um, Lots of what? Uh, like people, um, spirits now, like people mingling in, in groups. Um, just like we're practicing combat, like fight moves. Mm -hmm. How do you look like? I'm wearing like samurai robes. Samurai robes? Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm with my companion... Um, practicing like martial art block moves mm -hmm. are you male or female i'm male mm -hmm. i've got like um black shoes and i'm practicing the actions and the steps mm -hmm. it's important that um i learn these moves in spirit so when i get to earth they're more innate and, and faster uh, where are you now then you're not on earth Yet. No, this is like the training ground before. Oh, you still um, keep on with your um, education? Yes. Preparing. But, yeah, but this is slightly different, isn't mm -hmm. I'm kind of practicing being the human form. Uh -huh. And why are you learning this martial art? How will that help you in your mission? Learning to work with the body? or? Um, no, I'm okay with that. This is um, one of the th ways I'm getting to get close to the the spirit that requested help to raise vibrationally. So I'm having to train myself to fully be able to be at their side. So um, training in martial arts in the spirit world means I can keep up with them more once we're incarnated together. So um, in the spirit world, uh, I'm practicing with them the kind of the martial art practice that we'll be doing when we're incarnated. So you're planning to do this uh, also when you will incarnate in the body, when you will be in the body on earth? Yeah, just going through the moves so I can make sure I've got everything correct and can pick it up faster. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. And they're also learning um, how... It's, oh yeah, I'm in this kind of mock practice session. I'm the pupil and they're the teacher and we're just practicing mm. that role while we're in the spirit world. Mm. And who is the teacher there? How does it look? How does the teacher look like in this case? Um, there's no teacher. This is just known to be a room where you can practice out key moments mm -hmm. from, that you need to do ready for your incarnated life so mm. we're practicing it here so when we do it when we're incarnated it feels like it, everything's going perfectly isn't it? it is because we've been <laughs> practicing it elsewhere first and then it flows more when we're sure so yeah. from where are you picking up the knowledge maybe that's that's what I mean um I don't know I think it's just I in, in the spirit realm just know it and I'm just mm. going through the motions with mm -hmm. it. And the beings that you are practicing with, are they do they look like you or they have they look different? Yeah, we're we all look human in this one. Okay. And okay. we're all practicing like our martial art moves. Mm. Um, do you like it? I like moving my body and getting things precise and mm. the the awe in my who's going to be my uh, tutor's eyes as I get the moves perfectly on right and things. Mm -hmm. Very good. Awesome. So let's leave that scene and we are moving forward to another important day. I'm sitting in like a um, consultation chair. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of the priestesses of Hathor. You are one of the priestesses of Hathor? Yeah. How awesome is that? Tell me more about it, please. How do you, first, how do you look like? Have a um, look at yourself. 
I'm wearing a, a long robe mm -hmm. and on my head I wear a headdress of horns with a, the gold disc in the middle. With horns and the gold disc in, in, the, in the middle of the horns, yeah. Mm -hmm. What colour is the gown? Blue on the outside, gold in the middle and uh, on the stripes and like a blackish red in the centre panel. Beautiful. How does your skin look like? Oh, I've got um, brownish, dark brown skin. Mm -hmm. Does your body look human? Yeah, but I'm, I seem to be a lot taller than the people, because I sit in a chair, mm. which dominates the room, and I'm a bit taller than the people coming in. Mm. Well, how about your face? How does the face look like? Have a look. Very broad in the face. Broad? Yeah, like um, big, almost like a lion nose. Mm -hmm. Lion nose? Yeah, the lioness face, but mm -hmm. with a hassle horn. Mm. Do you have uh, more hair in the face? Oh, it's... oh I've got whiskers. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And the teeth? How do the teeth look like if you were to smile? Oh, I've got fangs. Uh -huh. Or canines, yeah. Mm. And the eyes? Kind of almond eyes, but mm. they've got more cat-like eyes. Kind of oriental slant, but with cat's eyes. It's very odd. Mm. And uh, your hands and feet? They're like a uh, cross between, I've got the claws like cat paws, they're quite big but they are human-like, mm. so if they're more, yeah, the, the kind of, the human hands but they look like animal claws. Mm, I see. Alright, so look around you and tell me, where are you? I'm in a kind of a hall with other beings like me. I think there's, there's three others, again there's four of us. We're all different in different ways. Because you said that they are like you. So oh, as in um, size-wise, on sitting on thrones. I see. So they're yeah. all sitting on thrones. Yeah. Same size, but then different futures. Different, yeah, um, one has a beak. Mm. Can you describe me this being with the beak? What do you see? It's got the vulture head, but with a human body, but it's massive. Mm. What colour is this king? Um, he's a black beak and black head, mm. and white ruffle around his neck. Mm. And is then, it feathery? This, the, is it covered with feathers, the head? No, it's quite smooth, and then ah. like a, a feathered white collar. Mm. But the hands, again, humanoid and dark-skinned. Mm -hmm. And there, there's two others. Um, I'm not really connected with them as I am with the, the one that looks like a beak. Mm. So you feel you're more connected with him? Yeah, the yeah. other two are, are part of our team, as it were. But and how are you connected with the, with the bird? I keep him in check. Um, so people come to see us mm -hmm. um, and obviously we're on big thrones and they look up to us but I I try to help them whereas the colleague with the beak is quite easy his anger is quite intense mm. so if he's displeased he'll say a sharp word but he doesn't realise the effect it has on the people that basically come to worship him. So mm. I have to make sure <laughs> that... Um, he doesn't cross the border. Yeah, it's like we're here to help them, not kind of get off on the fact that they look up to us because we're vastly different to them. We just... Uh, mm. How do the people who come for, to you for help, how do these people look like? They look like humans, mm. quite small. 
smaller than you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what are they wearing generally? What just just have a, like focus on one of them just and describe me what what kind of clothing do they have on? Just normal kind of linen clothes. Linen. Yeah. Mm. Like, Mm-hmm. They, the robes that go loose fitting robes that go down to the floor and the, like a scarf around them what is this place where you are now where are you it's a hall we kind of it looks pretty but we're a prison because we can't step down because we might accidentally step on the people uh, what do you mean you cannot step down well we can but if we get down from the thrones we might step on the people that have come to see us which I'm worried about doing we can't leave this temple because, well, look at us. <laughs> we leave this temple. <laughs> yeah, we're crazy. So you are way too much bigger than, than the, yeah. the people who are there to see you? And a doorways in uh, for the people that come to see us mm. um, and kind of try and get help from us. But we can't leave this, this building so you never leave this building? No, we were put here. Um, yeah, I think we were placed here mm-hmm. to, to help people. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like in a zoo, um, people feel safe enough to, to come and see us because A, they can run out, and B, we can't go after them because the doorways are too small for us to get out. Mm. So you, you have to stay there all the time? Yeah. Okay. We don't need... I don't know how this has worked. We don't need to go to the toilet or anything. We're just these beings that they come to see. But because we were trapped here, that's what's leading to my bird colleague to be restless. Mm-hmm. So. And um, why do they people come to you? What do they want from you? How do you work with them? They come because they fear us. But at the same time, they're awed by us and they can say that they dare to go in and, and see us. I think half the time they even hear what we say. It's more of a dare to come in and see these huge beings which don't belong on their planet <laughs> in this room that's been built around us. What do you think is your purpose um, to be there? Why, why are you put there? We're the last of our kind. You are the last of your kind? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The world's changed, so... There were more of you? Yeah, we kind of, uh, it's a dinosaur moment where we can't be sustained anymore. What do you mean? Well, we're so massive compared to what what is now more pavilion on this place. Mm-hmm. How are you sustaining yourself? What do you need to sustain yourself? Oh, all right, okay. Uh, eating people. <laughs> we, Humans? Yeah, because they were a lot smaller than us. We'd just pick them up and eat them mm. yeah that explains why we're in this room then fair enough <laughs> okay but then you still need to eat something there no um this is punishment what do you mean um we're here until we die of starvation okay because we were a menace to where we were we were just gobbling up the people that were wandering around as I'm incarnated now like bugs so we just eat them and go, ugh. But now, it, it, I guess it sounds like it would be easy for you if you wanted to um, grab one and eat, no? How, is, how do they prevent this? Um, a, I don't want to anymore. I, I want to be better than that. And B, I know it's their place now and we're not needed anymore. So we're just like the tourist attraction as it were it's like come see the last of the the beings that used to live here and feed on us and use us like cattle you mentioned um, Hathor is that right mm. in the beginning of the scene you said you oh we're wearing horns and, and things I like the iconology of it I like um, the image of it of it, the horns how is Hathor uh, connected to you you said you are the priest of Hathor is that correct? I wanted to. You wanted to be? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I think I can't sense the other two that was with us because they've already passed. Mm-hmm. They're just shells of them. 
and me and the other figure what's left. You I'm said a... you wanted to be the priest of Hathor. Could you explain that? In what way you wanted to be and how could you do that? I wanted to pass on her message and be a kind of serve her. But somewhere along the way, something went wrong. Because the beings that we were kind of wandering around with on this place were so small, we didn't really acknowledge them like they should be. So although we were this mighty figure with crowns that to serve them, we didn't. Can you tell me more about Hathor? And what is your connection to her? Who is she? Where where was in, or is she in this experience that you're having now? I feel maybe through ritual, uh, like a mother connection. I adored her. She was. You adored her. Yeah. How were you connected to her? What was your what is your relationship with with, with her? I was sent to be kind of her emissary, to mm. kind of pass on her her wisdom and love. Sent by whom? For her, from her. Sent from her directly? Yeah, from, from the line to kind of show love from her energy. Mm-hmm. And I like the horns and things. I like the power. But I think I just got frustrated with I, with how to do it. I, I didn't know. But I'm quite eager now that we're in this hall and it's all gone a bit tits up that we don't make matters worse by taking it out on the, the humans that are quite rightly coming to poke and jeer at us. So, yeah. You didn't have uh, communication and guidance from her during your mission? No, I think I kind of, when I spoke to her and came to do the mission, I was like, yes, I've got it, I've got it. So I went and mm-hmm. did what I... I suppose my ego got in the way. It was not as easy as you thought. No. Mm. Was it planned that you would um, uh, live from humans? Um, or this got... I think because it was so easy to just pick up a handful and eat them, um, mm-hmm. it was assumed, oh, that's all right. Mm-hmm. And because I was with a, with a crowd that I also liked the power of it, we didn't really have a positive influence on each other. On each other or on which one do you mean? Well, as, as a group, like, the peer pressure because we were all doing it it was accepted as normal what's wrong with doing it it's only slowly as it drip fed that we were misusing our power Mm. that the room i knew when they were building the altar it was to trap us and i knew that was the only way the right way that this the situation could be redeemed So I didn't tell the others. The others' egos were far away, going, oh, they're building a hole for us, it'll be great. But I could see that it was a massive trap. Mm -hmm. And I knew why it was being built, so Mm -hmm. I kept my mouth shut Mm -hmm. and went along with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's leave that scene and let's move forward to the last day of your life in this lifetime that we are watching. My bird colleague has finally died. Mm Mm-hmm. From starvation? Yeah, his head has collapsed. The humans have got ropes to pull down the figures. We're massive compared to them, so it's taking loads of them to throw the ropes up around the bodies to yank them off the thrones. Mm -hmm. Does uh, your colleague um, have a name? How were the people calling him? Or how how were you calling him? I'm seeing A-T-I-S, Atis. Atis? Atis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's gone. Well, yeah, he, he's died. Mm. And they're busy pulling the figures down that are quite clearly not going to attack them. Mm-hmm. They're leaving me last because they know I'm still alive, but they know at this point. So they could start cutting me already to pieces and I'll just let them do it because I know this is my punishment. Okay. How do do they do you have a name? How do they people call you? I've got APEC. Can you spell it? Is it possible? A P E C K. Mm-hmm. Oh, I finally collapsed now my body. I'm leaving the body. Okay. You can talk about it. You don't have to experience it physically or emotionally. You're just observing. So what happens? What do they do with your body? 
they yank it down uh, like they did the others mm -hmm. um, and they're going to have a big feast to celebrate we find the menace of the area has gone mm. so how is it for you uh, now that you're outside of the body oh relief <laughs> I can imagine what, you've lived a long long time in this body yeah but I did it so wrong oh it's awful mm. Mm. I want to make that mistake again. Oh. Mm -hmm. So every life has a purpose and a lesson. As you look back at that life, what did you learn from it? Experiencing ultimate power, the, the one that I kind of try and avoid now, going, yeah, I'm great, I can do anything. Mm -hmm. But letting the ego run riot and not considering other people. Mm. So you, <coughs> the ego took over in the in, in the last in the life that we that you were so. On. Yeah, I got to live it to the max in that life, just being like a, acting like a god and throwing my weight around. So let's drift away from that life, leaving this being there, to continue on its journey. May I speak to Karen's higher self, please? Yeah. So do I have permission to ask questions? Yeah. I know this, the higher self could have brought forth many different lifetimes for her to see today. In my understanding, they were two different, but please clarify for us. What did you saw her? There was one experience where she was librarian and preparing herself for a mission on Earth and... Then we jumped into a felin type being. Can you tell us more about these lives you saw her? I wanted to show her the root of why she's scared of her own power. Mm -hmm. She's still punishing herself for that only one life she misused the power that she had. The felin being that yeah. she saw her. She's so upset with how wrong that went. Mm that she over panics and emphasizes to make sure that it never happens again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of her support group and all of her guides are helping her to make sure that it doesn't happen again. They know how much it tarnished her soul. So that's why you wanted to show it to her because this is uh, very important at this time for her life now. Yeah. We have, she has been aware of other times when she's been oracles and guides and she has never, ever misused her power in those positions as she did at that life. Mm. But she has never kind of allowed herself to move beyond that one time. Okay, so it's time for her to remember and release that and yeah. forgive herself for that. Yeah. Okay, where was that life? Ancient Earth not in the records it was one of the first versions of earth okay so even before lemuria um it was a running parallel to Lemuria. i see so what is uh, there for her to learn from that life that you show her the others can influence you she was with a team of four it wasn't just her fault mm. and from that life she learned the power of peer pressure and peer influence, which she has used at, at every single incarnation afterwards. She, what do you mean? She can recognize when she's going along with the herd because that's what's accepted by the herd. And she purposely finds other people outside of her peer group to make sure that what happened that lifetime does not happen again. Okay, okay. So in a certain level, she's aware. Yeah, okay. that normal... What is normal within her peer group can be twisted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what is normal for other peer groups is something to balance against. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. But it's always that safety measure. But she, without that lifetime, she w wouldn't have put that in place for all the subsequent lives. So it would be wonderful if, if now she can forgive herself. Yes. And step into her power fully it's the only thing that's blocking her power is that she hasn't forgiven herself for the way she treated all those people mm. 
Mm. And what would be the best way for her to do that, to to really forgive herself and, and release all this energy and all these cords that she, she made so that she can really step forward she's, free? She started doing it already. She treats insects with the ultimate respect that she did not show those people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where possible, she tries to humanely trap insects and put them outside. All things that humanity deems as lower life forms she treats like humans mm. there's nothing she's not going to get punished in, in this lifetime so she should not have fear no using her power and she should use her power because this time around she, she comes from a loving space and she yeah. wants to resolve all this Karen you've put loads of safeguards in place so you do not misuse your power like you did that one time Mm-hmm. Do not be scared. Wonderful. I think she really needed to hear that. <laughs> so horrible for that. <laughs> I'm learning to forgive myself. Yes. Very good. And uh, can you, from this uh, higher standpoint that you are, can you assist her with this process? Yes. To really accept herself unconditionally and really forgive herself. Pouring light energy into my heart and to my body. Very good. May I keep asking questions? Yes. Before this lifetime, you saw her another experience uh, within the libraries and preparing herself. Could you tell her, talk to us a little bit more about this? What was this and why did you want to show it to her? She loves helping others and supporting others in their learning so they may improve. Mm -hmm. She's trying to help others not make the same mistakes she did with the abuse of power. But this only comes through knowledge and um, knowing how in each life egos take control and how things can be twisted if the wrong perception is looked at. So Karen is drawn to logical brained people because of her, the team that she was with with that life worshipped knowledge and brain power above love and connecting and serving. The group of the lab- in the libraries? I uh, know that the group from the life where they were entombed. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. They worshipped knowledge for knowledge's sake. There was no connecting to love with it or yeah. how it could be used to serve others. Mm-mm-mm. Only themselves. Yeah. So she helps the logical people in the library from going down that same path. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wonderful. Why was it important um, to see this today? It's one of the big blocks. She loves doing it, but she doesn't know why. She's always drawn to those who poo-poo the psychic side and value knowledge above all else. She's trying to change the path and what happened before. She's trying to help those who value logic above all else to remember to connect to their heart while they're doing it. Because without that, that's what leads to things being taken for granted and the us versus them divide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what would you like to advise her? Everyone does it on their own path. It's not your fault. If they're not fully connected to their heart, it's their decision. Mm -hmm. You're not in control of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do what you have been doing and as you've listened to us tell you, put the things in place that they're ready for and they're ready to read or listen to them. Regarding the, the, the block that she had, uh, is there anything else that she could uh, do to resolve it, to release it? Not really. I mean, there's the holding of the rose quartz. Just meditate with a rose quartz. Mm-hmm. When she feels herself becoming, trying to make herself small again, uh, and connecting to the rose quartz heart that she has will help her bring her back. Mm-hmm. And how is the rose quartz uh, helping her in this process? 
it keeps her heart soft and less hard. Mm -hmm. So that's very important for her at this time. Yeah. To heal this wound. Yeah. I mean, the process has been started. Wonderful. Were there any people in these uh, two experiences that uh, that uh, you saw her that she knows in this life? Yeah. And you want to tell her, is it important for her to know some of these connections? She already knows third being. Uh-huh. He's as powerful she, as she is, but he's not scared to show it. Mm-hmm. So he didn't hold on to the grief and uh, guilt? No, he held on to the power mm. that he's displaying in other ways. But he's managing it. Okay. Is but there any karmic depth between them? Loads. Mm. They've been married. Karen's aware of this a few times. This information has been covered already. Okay. Uh, yeah, there was a contract in place mm. from when their Egyptian lives, which they've dissolved. They're there to keep each other in check. Okay. Anything that she needs to know at this time regarding this relationship? It will not break with you having your full power back. That was her fear that okay. if she got her full power back, it would be swayed by others. The reason that she chose him was he can't corrupt her like she knows others can. Mm. Great. So is there anything else that she needs to know? Keep showing love and don't be scared. Okay. As you become stronger, just keep connected to the love. Does she know how to do this in her day-to-day -day life? Yes, we, we send her information and she's been picking it up, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. What about her panic and nervousness reactions? What, uh, what are they caused from? The only leash she put around her neck. <laughs> so, um, in analogy to the feline, entity I see. she gave herself a collar and a leash mm. so that she could never get too far out of control is that why she has the rashes the red rashes around her neck it's the energy as well because when she gets uh, anxiety when she gets anxious um, there's rashes show up around her around her neck or is this tied to something else uh, there's a lot of energy in this body for the transition that's due to take place, mm -hmm. she's had this energy before the frequency of the Earth was ready. Mm. So it's like a, a volcano. <laughs> All right. So as the frequency is rising, it should balance out more. Because the rashes, they, they, they start to get worse uh, the last year. And the... Uh, there's especially one in the, around her mouth. Can you talk to her about that one? Is this connected with what you have been saying already or what? Or no, the, the rash around the mouth. Um, she's sensitive to a cream she puts on. Aha. Uh -huh. It's so simple. Mm. <laughs> she thought it was the water, but once she puts a filter on the water, it's fine. I see. So she just has to get rid of the cream that she's using? Yeah. And what would you suggest then instead? What kind of cream? I try to see what's relevant on Earth at this time, and her skin is so sensitive. There's, uh, it's kind of just look like white with nothing in it. Something organic, I guess? Yeah, but even with the organic stuff, they've got more stuff they add to it. She mm -hmm. just needs to go right back to basics. Okay. What would be a product that is back to basics? Or where could she get it? Um, even with handmade stuff, it's the intent. She's, her skin and her body is infected by others' intent. Um, it's like maybe co just coconut oil? Um, no, that'd be too greasy. We'll show her. Okay. She'll know when she, she sees it. Super. Um, it's just she hasn't been to the place where... Okay, but you can guide her yeah, there yeah. and then whisper her which one is the right one for yeah, her. Yeah. Wonderful. So, in the meantime, she should just stop using this cream and, and, and the rash will go away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, but let's go back to the um, rashes 
around her neck. You talked about uh, that she has a lot of uh, energy within her body at this time. The, the energy with when she's around people um, mm -hmm. to escape. She's like a beacon, mm. but she's scared to show the light in case people are drawn to her and she misuses the power. Blah blah blah. Yes. Um, so she feels people are drawn to her. Her mm. body reacts accordingly, mm. like she was been put on the earth to do but she instantly shuts down and is scared so it's kind of a tug of war going on <laughs> I see I see so how we stop the cycle just letting it flow allowing herself to be the light and not be scared when people come to her she should find the rush um, dissipates faster it's biology hereditary has also played a part as well mm-hmm so while most of it as she remains calm and allows herself to kind of incorporate the energies the skin will still react in that way because that's where the physical body came from mm -hmm. so is it true that then also these energies are being uh, amplified yes she's done so much work to clear herself from a spiritual point of view her skin is paper thin it's all energy body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, can you give her some guidance regarding her red nervousness reactions? Don't make yourself so small. You don't need to anymore. I mean, th there was another aspect that she dealt with. Um, she's still not ready to hear. She hears... She, when incarnated on the other side, she was following divine order. She was expecting the similar when she came here and felt a bit lost mm. when she tried to follow the divine words and order through humans, which mm. understandably didn't work out very well. Mm. So, but we've dealt, she asked for help with that and we've dealt with that. Wonderful. Um, general nervousness is the tug of war with, I must be small so I don't eat these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has it been a human, uh, in a physical human body like this before, or is it the first time for her? Oh, many times. Many times, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, but she has, uh, she has experience as a human. But she's, yeah, but she's always been within a religious order to keep her in check, as she has requested. This is the first life where she's got the power of those positions mm -hmm. out in a world that isn't mm. cloistered away. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so much more freedom this time. Yes, but it's also brought on much more fear. Yes, oh, yes. Okay, but we don't need the fear, we keep the freedom. Yeah, I'll be fine. Wonderful. Would you like to comment on her tendency to be over picky? She fears judgment of others. Mm -hmm. But it's only her own judgment she fears. Mm, 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 mm. She can release that now. Yes, it's time for her to release it. I think now she understood. Yeah. Very good. You held yourself to, to account for what you did. And you have worked for your penance for it. You've learned from it, which is all that mattered. Um, so that's why she's blocking herself from her gifts, right? Yes, again, the more the word gets out there, the more people come to her going, oh, wow, you've really shown me, the more she shies away from it because she fears worship and that she doesn't deserve it. But she knows better and she knows to get them to worship themselves, not her. Mm. We've shown her information to prevent that happening, which was her main worry. Give the power back to the person. So she will... Uh now be able to remove these blocks yeah they've been removed now wonderful wonderful uh, were these also these blocks um, had the ability to f um, block her financially or is it this caused by something else the financial thing was keeping herself small mm. if she always was on a low wage and bow down to someone else that meant that she was still being monitored and controlled yeah it was fear of being standing in her own power mm -hmm. 
So she's ready now to take this power back? Yes. To stand on her feet and, and be able to sustain herself and be financially abundant? Yes, she is responsible enough now to deal with it. She always was, but she didn't believe it, but yeah. she does now. That's why she had uh, Frank as um, the one who would she get the abundance through, so long she would stand on her feet. Yes, his Frank is just as powerful as she is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He stands in his power happily. I mean, he's got his separate issues that Karen's helping with. Mm. and Karen's issues he's helping with but can't do all of them because he does need to be kept in check. Yeah. His persona is not one that would reflect. If he had all the power available to him, he would misuse it. And mm. Karen, although she'd try and step in, would be crushed mm. trying to keep him in check. Mm. There are other things in place to keep him in check. Karen doesn't need to do that. Okay. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, the issue that she had in her in her back, the scoliosis? Where does it come from? Partly spirit integration. There was lots of umming and ahhing about coming into this life. What do you mean? She was scared about being incarnated into this life initially. Why? The power that she would eventually unleash once all the blocks were removed, the potential for that. Mm. She was still cautious about it. Um, having scoliosis put her on the path for connecting with her previous husband and also her previous wife. In what way? It gave her a bond with her husband she didn't have when they were married. Mm -hmm. Which, um, And with the wife that she did mistreat. Mm -hmm. um, in this life, it was a way for her to offer guidance that she failed to do in their life together. So does she still, still need this? Uh... No, again, she keeps herself in check and... Okay. And she always asks for help to deal with this karmic uh, issue, which has now been resolved. Wonderful. So she doesn't need the, um, the scoliosis anymore? No. Wonderful. So can you help her now to, to release her from that? Yes. Very good. So you're doing it now? Yes. Um, we're sending love and heat down the spine. She will need to keep doing her exercises though. It's a way um, that... The way she gives herself an excuse to meditate as well as with the exercises mm -hmm. is her version of yoga and mind clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay, but she won't have the discomfort anymore in no, the back? No, no. She'll find it easier to keep limba now. Wonderful. And so, and um, the hip pain, is it, was it also caused by the misalignment of the spine? Was this connected or no? Yes, the way she was laying, um, the cartilage was digging into um, some of the main arteries and um, sciatic nerve okay. in, the, in the hip, but that's uh, being sorted now. Awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. What about the excessive uh, hair on her body? Why does, uh, where does it come from? A hormone imbalance. Mm. Is this something that can also be balanced today? Uh, we can try. We're um, going to put kind of silver energy around her ovaries. She wanted it initially as a reminder. She she liked the idea of being both male and female mm. to connect with her androgynous self. Mm. But she can be all female. Mm. She doesn't have to have the male side. Okay, not anymore. She can draw the power of the feminine energy. We also remind her if she releases that, that Frank can draw more on the masculine energy as they try and balance each other. He's tried to be androgynous as well, but it's not making him happy. Mm. So if she releases the need to be half male, mm. he can release the need to be half female. Beautiful. So this is something that she commun can communicate to him? Yeah, as she takes steps to let go of the 
kind of need to be half masculine. Mm. He'll reduce the need to be half female. Beautiful. And then they will find their balance again. Yeah. yeah. Very beautiful. So this um, excessive hair is not uh, needed for her as a reminder, right? No, we're now washing that away from it. Very good. And uh, while you're doing it, uh, could you tell her what would be the most effective way that she embraces her feminine side, embody this female power? Again, holding on to the phrase quilt's heart would just helpfully be a reminder, Mm -hmm. a memory jog for her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, meditate with it as a rose heart is fine. With the rose quartz? Rose quartz heart, yeah. Wonderful. Is the healing in the spine done or you you're still working on it? It's gonna be take a while for the next few days. We'll keep putting energy through it. Wonderful, thank you, thank you. And the uh, ovaries? Spiritually these have been removed. Okay. So Physically they're there but there's no energy to them. So she had a very sweet request. She says she wanted to connect with Paul and Harley. Because she, she was wondering if, because they moved, if there is anything that they might need at this time. So does any of them want to connect at this time, want to come through her? Poe is coming first. Um, okay. They're showing themselves in a previous one. Uh, from a previous exercise, I've been shown like Atlantis, Egypt. They are huge, kind of tiger shaped cats. Wow. So they were massive. Mm. <laughs> but they still had similar personalities. Awesome. So is Poe is here now? Yeah, Poe is showing that he misses chomping on real meat. Hi, Paul. Hey. How are you? <laughs> He's good. Can I talk to you for a bit? Yeah, yeah, sure. You can. So Karen is ask is wondering if um, any is anything you need at this time. Are you happy, or is something that Karen can do for you? No. Um, as she knows, the move here was quite traumatic for us you were it was difficult for you yeah for me and my sister Mm -hmm. we were thrown in situations we weren't expecting it took us a while to adjust oh what kind of situations we thought as a family we'd always be in the uk at the same house on the same grounds but something shifted and father was called here where we are now and we weren't told until the last minute that we were coming to mum kind of blocked it from us and only told us five almost like five minutes before we were due to leave that it was taking place okay we've forgiven them both for that we know now why it had to take place and we're adjusting Okay, so Karen uh, would like to know how can she assist you? How can she help you make make this transition smoother and and, and sweeter and happier? Lots of hugs. <laughs> um, we know the outside will never be as it was in the UK, and our access to it won't be the same. Mm. We'd rather be together. We understood the choice was either this new life or being left behind mm. and left behind would have broken our hearts okay so you you're happy with the decision you made yeah okay i understand i won't get to eat real food until i pass i've tried to take on some of dad's issues but as he's slowly healing from them the necessity for me to take them on has lessened Mm-hmm. But this year will be the year that I will move on. Mm-hmm. And mum is aware that this is a a likelihood. Okay, okay, that's great. What about Harley? 
I'm angry I wasn't told. I am similar essence to mother. I like to know things and she did not tell me. Mm -hmm. I've come to accept this now, but I'm still angry about it. Would you have rather stayed back? No, to be stay back would have been left behind and I still wouldn't have had the same stomping ground and access. Okay, that that's so you're happy. You you took the right decision. You 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 know you took the right decision. Yeah. But do you do you, do you understand why why mum didn't say anything until last minute? She was scared. Yeah. Herself a lot of stuff was happening. Mm, I'm glad that you can see that. I forgive her. Okay, okay, that's great. But bear in mind, I don't want another cat after Pogo's. Okay. I want the house to myself. <laughs> okay. He's a nuisance. <laughs> I think uh, Karen will uh, agree on that. Mm -hmm. She will make sure that you have everything you need. And that's why she wants to connect with you today, because she loves you so much and she cares so much about you. and. She so really wanted to make sure that you guys are having everything you need. The food is helping. Um, I have the same issue as Poe, but because I eat less of it, greedy guts, um, I don't have as bad a damage as he did mm. or does. Anything else you would like to add before we say goodbye? Anything you would like to share with her? Just write my grumps, I love you. <laughs> and Dad. Yes, and, and Poe loves you too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for coming through, guys. Uh, so, may I speak to Karen's higher self again, please? Yes. Okay, so Karen would like a clarification regarding the rainbow uh. thing. Uh, see... Lately, since the, since March of 2017, she noticed that the, the rainbow uh, flipped colors. What is this? She was asking, what is that supposed to mean? It's, it was a positive change Okay. to show um, the earth had shifted, the frequency was being engaged. Mm -hmm. Karen is with, with that frequency but unfortunately, as part of the gift Karen has, she can see the shifts as they take place and notice the changes. Mm -hmm. Some people, it's easier for them to block it out and forget. But Karen can't forget, she can't lie, which means she can't be lied to. Which is why she noticed things when they're slightly out of sync, because a parallel universe has been moved into. Mm. What do you mean by that? Can you talk to us a little bit more about that um, change? When did this change take place in, in her reality? Six months ago. So a lot of... And, and she's noticed this as well because um, she can hear spirit and she could hear negative spirit. Mm with the lessons that we set on her path that she gobbled up readily, um, she could deal with them. But she noticed recently that they aren't as strong as they were. And this is when the frequency allowed the kind of universe she lives in to leap to a parallel universe um, where the changes could be made. But with parallel universes, things are slightly different for what she's used to in a previous existence, a, a previous life that she was living, a version of it, yeah, mm -hmm. versions. So this is like 2.2, she noticed when it was 2.1. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's due to go to 2.3 soon. When, when, when do you say soon? How, how soon is it gonna be, approximately? Do you have any? So I'll notice things by April mm -hmm. as the transition um, takes place. Mm. And uh, could you explain this um, change 
in a way that we could humans and grasp is concepts so um the degrees of concepts is the way you view animals is different the way you view kind of your own thoughts is different um so currently on one level people go i can do this because no one will know what i truly think inside from karen's perceptor from eightfold this will no longer be the case if you're used to lying your way through life you're going to have a very hard time mm-hmm. um in being integ integration is going to be the key you have to be what you say otherwise things will start to crack mm-hmm but people want to be more that way anyway it's hence the change in the rainbow yeah um what do you mean uh, the purple being the middle bit it's people reaching for their core values and wanting to be better mm. um is increasing as more people enjoy people being nice they themselves want to be nice mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's what lifts things out and all these all these changes that are being manifested in our lives are due to the uh, amplification of the energy that is coming through yeah it's a bit like um an hourglass when it first starts out it seems to be going so slowly and then when it gets towards the end it seems so fast mm. but it's always been dripping through is this mm. the amount of people that have followed the path was like dripping and now it's hissing through as people have more role models to look to there's more magazines videos to catch people's awareness now mm-hmm. than there was um Karen's know she's adding to it i know she feels that she's not reaching that many people but that's because she was holding herself back mm-hmm. and she's put it out there like we asked her to mm-hmm. despite her worries and kind of blaseness about it. Yeah. But she still put it out there. Mhm. Mm-hmm. So are these steps towards the new earth or are we in the new earth already or is it set different for every person? Such a loaded thing now because so many people <laughs> have heard the term Karen. Yes, that's why Karen. I'm asking. Yeah. I, would, I would like your your view on that. I mean each person is different. You find your peer group that you feel comfortable with it's like mm. again the rainbow analogy you you find the band that you're comfortable in mm-hmm. um again with with the the new earth it's in Karen's perception um it, it's like heaven you you're drawn to the people and your peer group that you feel comfortable with mm-hmm. and if your group um needs raising up slightly you'll find yourself in situations where that's um facilitated to happen mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. you know it's do you, you're hanging out in groups or are more open minded the music you're drawn to um changes your frequency so there's a lot of help out there as the the version is slowly filtered out through as a it's like we're all different mobile phones <laughs> mm-hmm. the upgrades been sent out some phones can take it more than others absolutely um those coming in with the brand spanking new phone will be fast at it because they've got more processing power <laughs> the older versions will take the new um upgrade but will be a bit slower at first mm-hmm. as they adapt so um my question was um slightly human from a human perspective we, and i was wondering if if we are already shifted to the new earth what people call this new earth or is it a gradual process or is it going to be is the shift happening slowly or is it going there's something going to happen like a big event that will then catapult us into a new earth Do I make myself clear? Yeah, I mean 
that's why we stopped her watching the videos mm. a few days before the session. I mean, she was watching videos where they're saying this big white light is going to, like a sound beam, go over the earth and take those who are at the right frequency away. <laughs> uh, yes, there there is going to be almost like a, um, a sonic boom going out, not like, not everyone covering their ear going ow, but um, the frequency will be felt through the bodies. So there is a certain time where there will be like a... A, a shit, well, kind of the, in my analogy, the the upgrade will be sent out and everyone will be, regardless of whether they accept it or not, it will be done on their their phones, their bodies. Okay, so there will be a, new, a collective yeah they will be picked, but some people will manage it better than others like okay. they have with every kind of upgrade okay um, they will, yeah okay they will adjust um, depending on their own uh, yeah. frequency to as, that as for kind of people disappearing um it for me i've been shown it won't be like last like um, there'll be three people on the street suddenly after <laughs> after this event. <laughs> um, it'll just be that the people who aren't of your frequency won't notice you. So going back to Dolores Cannon and the, the background people mm. will coexist, but there won't be as much friction mm. as there has been where people who don't like the higher frequency act out against it they'll just move away from it mm, mm, mm. much like um in the heaven realms when the angels energy is thrown out the ones of the lower energies just move away because they they don't want to be shown in their true light they don't want the truth because they can't handle it so that they'll move away yeah yeah there needs to be a frequency match yeah so there'll be more of that happening rather than the low people who aren't quite a vibratory match acting out and causing mayhem in order to bring the higher frequencies down because there'll be more higher frequency for them to battle against so it's not worth their while to start mm. the battle in the first place and that will be the change mm -hmm. so we are building up uh, our energy the energies are building up for this uh, for this event yeah yeah mm. when do you see it happening how far from now it will be a transitional thing and everybody will experience it differently yeah yeah okay is it gonna be like a physical uh, manifestation like a flash of, of light and like a, we know solar is it connected with well, solar activity it has to have some physical basis because those that are logical brained need something that they can grip onto to explain oh it's because of this so there will be some kind of visual incarnation mm. just so that they accept it and don't completely forget about it but it won't kind of christianity is filtered in a bit with the whole there'll be a big wave and only three people out of 500 left or something like that mm. it's not like that it's just there'll be more separation of the different frequencies gone in your consciousness yeah but people won't interact as much as they do now mm. so if you're one way of thinking you tend to drift off into one quarter if you're another way of thinking you'll drift off into that yeah like um oil and water separating really mm -hmm. the people who are very physical um brained will need something that will explain it so that's being provided for them mm -hmm. awesome thank you so much mm. so is there any of their family members um, maybe wish to connect w with uh, with her in this at this time? We're opening up a doorway. Okay. Um, her mum's come in for a hug, so she can see her. Does her mum want to share anything with us today? Her mum is proud of everyone, the way that they've coped with it all she wanted to leave before her mental health declined mm -hmm. because of what happened with her mother mm -hmm. Karen was aware of this okay how is she now 
she's ecstatic awesome she wasn't a believer in the afterlife uh huh what a shocker yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um but Karen had purposely drip fed information to her for her <laughs> entire life so right. it wasn't that much of a shock okay and she's met up with yeah all the people Karen communicates with regularly grandfather grandmother so uh, from this standpoint they, they can uh, understand her daughter much much better right yeah she recently oh she was involved with that okay so Karen asked about the relationship with her mother and was shown the life in which her mother was her daughter Mm. and that was quite revealing so a lot of issues have been dealt with by by that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there was abandonment issues and yeah are these issues uh, uh, exposed and, and resolved yes yes I've been awesome. okay this isn't a place for um, a mediumship thing but everyone's happy okay and they've they're able to pass on messages as they want anyway so. okay great so, okay, now we have a story about the uh, alien pen pal. So, would be great if you could give her some more information about about this entity who, in my understanding, have some certain kind of relationship with her, where he can observe life on earth through her yes is that is that correct yes okay and um, where can i i would like to understand this relationship she, and she she would like to understand this relationship could you talk to her about it it was part of her penance after that life that we showed her she was so ashamed and upset mm -hmm. and begged at her table how can i make this right okay and at that point, a contract was made with this entity mm -hmm. that he could do experiments with her in order to learn. Because uh, what he learned, he passed on to his group. All right. So the benevolent uh, experiments? Yes. What did he want to learn through her? About humans in general. Okay, okay. He was aware others of his spe well, species or kind of soul group, like humans, but his um, void form um, have used... Humans are very important in lots of things. Mm -hmm. They gain lots of interest. Some entities are doing it better than others. This one asked for a volunteer where he could practice and pass on the information so that hundreds didn't have to go through the same procedure. I see. So in a way, this contract was a um, karma payback. Yeah. Of all the entities, she gobbled up and treated like they were breadsticks. Wow. She prevented that many people from being experimented on by what was done to her. Mm-hmm. And this entity was able to write a paper that he could pass on to prevent hundreds of thousands being used to mm -hmm. gain the knowledge that he brought I see. to his people. I'm curious about how the mechanism of this relationship between them. So does this being still operate through her? As a friend. As a friend, okay. So the contract has been fulfilled? Null and void. Fulfilled, it's all been null and void. He stands in front of me now as Karen's higher self with the box of all of the stuff he put in her body to monitor. What, do, what does this box include? <laughs> it looks like old computer equipment, things in her organs, uh -huh. things in her third eye, her eyes, her hands, her feet everywhere so there were implants in her physical body um no they were in her astral body in her astral body okay okay that was implanted by him for in order to do this yes this, this work yes mm -hmm. so 
Have, seeing them in the box means that these have been now removed. Removed at the at the meeting that Karen arranged between him and the in, intimate, the uh, intimacy, the invigilator or mediator. I see. They work. They all work together to remove the things because they were no longer needed. All knowledge that was required was gained, but it now is no longer relevant as the Earth has shifted frequency. Humans are now able to communicate directly to different species, so they no longer need to use these implants in order to communicate. Mm -hmm. So it was important work back then, but it's now irrelevant and old, hence the box of old computer equipment. <laughs> All right, and how does the sun come into play? The sun of this entity. He was shown the next generation of the work, although it caused issues, what it resulted in. As you mentioned, the hybrids, they know how to treat them better. So he, wasn't, he is indeed a hybrid? Yes, he has spirit and their species combined. Uh, there's other hybrids, there's, there's lots of interbreeding going on as, yeah. the, as the frequency rises, species are needed to work together mm. and it's easier if there's ones which are half of both. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so this, um, this uh, little entity that we are talking about is, um, is a breed between uh, a grey and uh, a human? Oh, he's, like <laughs> he's not grey. Uh, he's green, but his body shape is similar to a grey. All right. Um, he ha does he have human um, DNA? Is he a human hybrid? No, but... Um, so this isn't the boy. The, the boy is having fun. He's not going to be brought into this. He is pure bloodline for his species, but he has other family members who are kind of got a trace of other things in them. Okay. So that's what made him compassionate to wanting to get to know other species. Mm -hmm. And so the transition period won't be painful. The transition period for him, for him? Of the communication and the melding between species to make sure it smooth, flows smoothly. Um, that's why he, it was, he was interested in this line of work on his in his world and existence all right okay anything else that uh, Karen should know about this relationship or should we move on no it's just a thank you we can communicate it's fine mm -hmm. he's given me a hug and my heart the higher self a hug that's very nice we've achieved what we wanted to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so mission complete yes wonderful wonderful and we can work together for now as equals going forward <laughs> he's just picked up his kid for a wave goodbye and they're, they're heading off now <laughs> oh his energy is so lovely so moving on to the next question um uh, there's this entity uh has up been approaching Karen for the beginning of her life this time um, he would like to get his name right and <laughs> know more about him, if it's indeed a, a male presence. He said he got a name called like something like Zafril. Yeah. Is that is that correct? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could we have a, the the name spelled so that she's really sure about how to call him? Come on, sorry, he's just giving me a symbol. He's <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know it's a very human question. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. He's my colleague. Okay. In Karen's higher self, he's um, a colleague. I asked him to intervene so that I could get to this stage and not get lost in the noise. Wonderful. So he's here all along? Yeah. Um, what is his, his relationship He's like a brother to her. In my higher self version, he's like a fellow angelic being. Uh huh. Um, is it one of her guides, or, or what is his purpose, or his his role in in, in Karen's life? He's one of um, 
kind of celestial beings that doesn't want to incarnate mm. but I had to for the request that got made of me with regards to um, Frank's soul progression so as I requested of him I asked that he stay with me so that I could keep my angelic energy high throughout mm. my life while human because mm-hmm. as I've seen with others it's easier to get lost in the noise oh, and, yes. and lose it yes. but through his help as I requested I was able to keep in touch with it that's great I've, I haven't met many people who have they're now coming out of it thankfully but um, yeah I've seen a lot of drug use to get in touch with their angelic selves which led to more issues and through my family that I chose and his help I managed to avoid those pitfalls and I'm very grateful for that intervention mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah I would like to thank him for, for being in her life but in my regression before I fed the information I was one of four and the fifth one didn't incarnate and the fifth one was Zafriel there's three others of us in the soul group. Mm-hmm. And where are they now, the others? Uh, we, we're scattered everywhere. We kind of connect. Um, mm-hmm. Are you part of the same... Are they part of the same soul group or... How does this work? Um, we kind of like managers... So our soul group would be like our, our team, mm. um, but we are like the managers, so middle management. As well. <laughs> so the four that are in my group, not necessarily what we class as a soul group because we're kind of in a different, is a different relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay. I, it's nice when I see them because they're, they're also working to spread. So um, the classroom and in the university, um, they were the other three um, of the kind of management team that are of my team. Mm -hmm. So you had the yellow being, the red being and the black being and and me. Yeah. So they're the the core four that I tend to work with. I see. With, With Zafriel being our kind of core and making sure our connection to the spirit realm doesn't dim too much mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay great <clears throat> um, I've been told to use an A instead of an E so Z A P H R I A L so Zafriel yeah okay great thank you for this clarification and uh, I suggested her, to her that she would ask uh, for uh, some more um, information about her mission. She said she knows a few things already, and I thought just would be maybe useful and to ask you again. Maybe you have another perspective or something more to add. Don't be scared of your energy because of how much energy was brought through and how much we worked to keep coming through when you enter a room you change the frequency and like a tuning fork all those around you start rising up higher as well in the past this has caused issues as people have not liked this sensation but this will become less of a problem as more people scrabble to try and be of a higher frequency so they'll be drawn to you because you make the world make sense as you help raise their frequency to their new um, upgrade that's come through. Fantastic. So I would like to ask uh, if you can make a body scan on her body and uh, go through her whole body and uh, see if there is anything that needs attention. 
her right sole of her right foot is there's a black patch. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it causing it? Uh, she, <laughs> it's the last remnants of this <laughs> Caribbean Karen. She noticed that she constantly was bashing or breaking the ankle of her right leg. Yes. So she took it upon herself to do a spirit release like she'd been watching on the YouTube videos. <laughs> okay. She uh, managed most of it mm -hmm. and uh, we cleared up the mess from the rest like she, she noticed something had gone awry and not done it properly. Mm. Um, but it's kind of the scar left from it. When you're cooking and you don't cook properly and leave a like a burn at the bottom of a saucepan, it's kind of like that. Okay, so is it time to to clean this now to release it? Yeah, I'm just giving it a good scrub now. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. I'm just the leg is um, just cleaning the residue that got left behind mm -hmm. from the uh, spirit cleaning. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yeah, that's done now. Super. How about the rest of the body? How is everything? The ovary spirit energy, I can put back, but it was requested. Mm. That says if you concentrate on the mission that no children be born. Uh -huh. um, there was requests for kind of a passageway, which was what the miscarriages were for, but no actual full-term children. Mm -hmm. As... Karen doesn't want any more miscarriages and as, as part of this life doesn't want any full-term children that's why we've taken away that possibility okay is this choice still aligned with her life yes okay wonderful if there is no children there's more space for entities to come in to be helped mm. and that's what she's here to do yeah okay Okay, great. Um, how about her energy centers? <laughs> so, Karen was shown when she was 17 a technique where you turn the crown, like uh, the chakra in the crown, like a, a switch, mm -hmm. and that automatically untwists all the other chakras. Mm -hmm. I've just done this on my Karen's body. Mm -hmm to show her. Um, Karen thought she could do it on other people, but it takes consent, which she's, she's learnt through the counselling course that we put her through. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's with the new energy coming in, it, this technique can be used by those who are happy for it to, to be done. And we've just done it on her. It's um, a way to clear all chakras within moments. Awesome. So she will also now have a much more clear ability to express herself because I felt that there was something in her throat. Yeah, that's again around the leash she put around herself has now been removed. Mm -mm -mm. What about the thyroid issue? Is it also a cause of, uh, of what she... Yeah, she was scared to speak because of the power coming through, that the knowledge that she had how it would interfere with people's life's path mm. but again she's more trusting now so that can be repaired okay so she won't have to deal with the symptoms of, of um, mis balanced thyroid no no awesome uh can you have a look at her pineal gland and tell us in what condition is it We'll put the real one in. This um, got swapped for something else. Staring at you, yes. <laughs> I'm now giving back the proper one and replacing it. There, it's in place now. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, it's bright light. Okay. It's awesome. like a light bulb. Awesome, awesome. No, so no need to work on it at this time? No, no. Wonderful. Is there anything else that you would like to do to now to assist her? And, uh, Remind her to have more fun and smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tend to forget that. 
so easily. Okay, wonderful. Uh, is there anything else that you wish that you would have asked today? How to recognize her team, the team of four. Okay, did she get the answer already? So I'll, I'll say it out loud. Yes, please, because then she can hear it in the recording. Look out for the work that they're doing and the influence that they have and then you'll recognize your team. Thankfully, all the team members that were in that hall have learned from their mistake and we're, as a team, are all making positive differences to getting people in touch with their soul and working towards a divine goodness plan. So they're, they're going to be like leaders in their field to helping people be more spiritually in tune with an emphasis on love. Mm. 